Grace to you and peace, my friends, and welcome to our second Sunday in Lent worship service. I invite you to prepare yourselves to celebrate the presence of God among us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Children of God, God hears you when you cry and draws you close in Jesus Christ. So, let us return to the one who is full of compassion by confessing our sins. Open to me the doors of repentance, O life giver, for my spirit rises early to pray towards thy holy temple, bearing the temple of my body all defiled, but in thy compassion purify me by the loving kindness of thy mercy. Make straight for me the paths of salvation, O God, for I have profaned my soul with shameful sins and have wasted my whole life in easy-going indifference. But by the intercessions of Jesus Christ, deliver me, God, from all uncleanness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. When I think of the multitude of ghastly things I have done, wretched that I am, I tremble at the fearful day of judgment, but trusting in the mercy of thy loving kindness. Like David, I cry to thee, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us, let us sing joyfully the canticle of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray in unison. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, I invite you to sing the opening hymn. and Sarah. Last Sunday we read about God's covenant with Noah and his family and the whole creation. And now we are going to learn about the second covenant that God made. God promised to make Abraham and his family to make them many and multiply them and to make them the ancestors of many people with whom God will remain in everlasting covenant. We will learn from Paul's letter that he teaches that this promise comes to all who share Abraham's faith and in the God who brings life into being where there was no life. We receive this baptismal promise of resurrection, life, and faith. Sarah and Abraham receive new names as a sign of the covenant. And we too get new identities in baptism as we put on Christ. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I, am, I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. 
I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 22, verses 23-31. till 31. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor or the afflicted in their affliction. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, your son cried out in anguish from the cross and you delivered him. Do not hide your face from those who cry out to you, but by his death and resurrection bring life where there is death. Feed the hungry, strengthen the weak, and break the chains of oppression, that all people may rejoice in your saving deeds. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The second reading is from the Apostle Paul letter to Romans, chapter 4. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings that. But where there is no law, neither is their violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, 
not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about hundred year old. Or when he considered the bareness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. of the cross of our Lord, Jesus Christ, by which the world is crucified to me and I to the world. Galatians chapter 6 The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and after three days, rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Good God. Good God. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? 
or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Savior said, if you would my disciple be, forsake the past and come this day, and humbly follow after me. Take up your cross, let not its weight pervade your soul with vain alarm his strength shall bear your spirit up sustain your heart and nerve your arm take up your cross nor heed the shame nor let your foolish heart rebel familiar psalm to all of us. It opens with the words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Words uttered by our Lord Jesus on the cross in the Gospel narratives. Psalm 22 is categorized as an individual lament in which the psalm singer cries out to God for deliverance from some life-threatening situation. But the portion of the psalm read today is caricatized, categorized as praise and adoration. Like the author of Psalm 22, we are confronted by things seemingly beyond our control. We cry out to God, detailing the hurt, the bitterness, and the fear. We express our heartfelt desire for retribution or deliverance. The son must believe that God helped him in the past and God will help him now. Don't we have the same experience? God has been there to deliver us or to help us find a way through the pain in the past. So we believe that God can once again meet us where we are. I keep reminding myself of God's steadfast love in my life when I face trouble so that I receive courage by remembering how God helped me. Maybe a story of a friend or a family member can assure you of God's deliverance. So I'm not going to share a personal story of mine. I would like to share with you a story of an Indian woman whom God 
delivered her from her difficult circumstances. When Kamini do Harvey was just a child, her mother died and her father remarried. Her stepmother abused Kamini and her father did not stop, did not step in to protect her from his new wife. Unprotected and unseen, unsafe, Kamini left home where she was older, when she was older, and eventually found a place to rent and a job in a small shop. Even out on her own, she did not feel safe. Kamini feared that the landlord who owned her residence would hurt her. The security she tried to find in leaving home eluded her. Through a door-to-door -door survey, Kameni learned about Nari Chakati, a project of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Madhya Pradesh in India, supported in part by ELCA World Hunger. Nadi Shakati works for gender equality through advocacy for women's rights, provides training in tailoring and computer skills, and offers emergency medical support to girls and women in vulnerable situations. The project also provides housing assistance and psychological support to those who needed. At the Navi Shakati project office, Kamini found a safe space to tell her story and people who would welcome her. With counseling and support from the project, she was able to leave the place she was renting and move into a hostel for girls. The project later arranged for Kamini to stay in a women's rehabilitation center where she is living and pursuing her studies. Before Kamini moved to the rehabilitation center project, staff tried to contact her father. But her father told the staff, that he no longer wanted anything to do with her and that it was up to her to live her life as she wanted. She was no longer welcome in her father's home. With nowhere else to go, Kameni has found a home at the center. The Navi Shakati program provides her, provides her a safe place to live, books, and additional support for her education. That's the end of the story. But let us face the, the reality, my friends. Around the world, 690 million people face hunger and each of them has a story to tell. Hunger is rarely just a matter of lacking food. Rather, it is often a persistent symptom of much deeper pain, of much deeper need. Unfortunately, stories like Kameni's are not, are not uncommon. For women and girls around the world, abuse, violence, and inequality lie behind the higher rate of hunger they face. Globally, globally, women are 13% more likely than men to experience food insecurity and almost 27% more likely to be severely food insecure. 
the psalmist says, the poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. To become God's hand to feed the poor and the hungry, we have to start by being honest about the stories of pain, exploitation, injustice, and violence that lie behind it. Try to imagine what Khamenei or the singer of Psalm 22 were enduring and how God delivered them. Or imagine a situation where you were afflicted and God delivered you. Do you remember this hard time you went through and God saved you? God had turned the cries and tears of Khamenei and the singer of Psalm 22 into joy because God did not despise or abhor the poor or the afflicted through the reflection. He did not hide his face from me but heard when I cried to him. The Lament Son is a powerful model for believers today. Life confronts us with issues and happenings that sometimes feel unbearable. And so we cry out to God. We cry and cry. We tell God what is wrong. We tell God what we want God to do. We recall those past instances in our lives or in the lives of those around us when God had made a way for us to handle the situation. And then, and only then, we can praise God for God's goodness and tell others about it. Lent commemorates Jesus' journey to the cross and thus demands of us honesty about the death-dealing pervasiveness of sin that would crucify truth in order to silence it. The honesty to which we are called compels us to confront the pain of the world with a vision to transform it. Both the pain of the world and the vision to transform it are clear in the stories of Kamini's life and the Nari Shakati project. It is the difference between the father who rejects her and the God who welcomes her. To know ourselves as claimed, named, and welcomed by God is an act of truth-telling about who we really are and who our Lord Jesus Christ is. When I share my stories, my personal stories with you, my purpose is to help you to see God in my life and God as God helped me God will help you too because you are precious in the eyes of the Lord in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen
Let us confess our faith according to the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized, that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we lift up before you all who are in need of your help. We pray especially for Thelma, Esther, Catherine, Sylvia, Abir, Giselle, Joel, O'Day, April, Brianna, Alice, Teresa, Scott, Phyllis, Ashley, Laura, David, Sarah, Jeff, Edie, Joan, Jamie and Mike, Ted, Pastor Mark, Maggie, Pat, Sonia, Jim, and Dwayne.
Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, also with you. You are invited now to share the peace of Christ with the people who are next to you. Thank you, my friends, for sending your offering to the church. Your dedication and faith in our mission as Emmanuel Lutheran Church means a lot. And now I invite you to meditate or, or sing the offertory hymn. in us the wonder of your power from fruitless fear unfurl our lives like springtime bud and flower bring us O Christ to share the fullness of your joy baptize us in the risen that death cannot destroy. Three person God fulfill the promise of your grace that we when all are searching ends may see you face to face. My friends, let us pray in unison. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, my friends, receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Let us sing our final hymn. statement. We are a fellowship of believers committed to live and share God's love by serving our community and the world. So go and do as you have just proclaimed. The Lord be with you. Amen.